Welcome to the College of Education 10-Minute Research Break, a podcast devoted to highlighting research by Illinois State University's College of Education faculty, staff, and students. So grab a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and take a break with us. Hello, I'm Tricia Class. Today I'm talking with Dr. Guy Banneke, who teaches educational administration classes in the Department of Educational Administration and Foundation. His specialty is school finance. The article we will discuss today focuses on a unique way schools can raise funds to improve school facilities. Thank you for talking with me, Guy. Thank you for this opportunity, Dr. Class. First, could you explain what QZABs are? Am I pronouncing that correctly? QZABs, yes, uh, you are. It's an acronym. You know, in our school finance class, we study all types of school bonds, and this is a rather extraordinary one. The acronym stands for Qualified School Zone Academy Bonds, and they are a federal tax support for the upgrade of school buildings. really nice thing about them is that they are interest-free federal bonds. So uh, we find that that saves about 50% of the total cost on any type of school renovation using this. Well, interest-free, you don't hear that too much anymore. A key point in this article that you and your co-author addressed was the criteria for qualifying for the QZAB funding. What are some of the key criteria for schools to apply, and how restrictive do you think the criteria are? Well, these school buildings have to be in an enterprise zone or a uh, TIF district, which is a tax increment saving for the taxing body. And so those are usually found in larger urban settings, but not always. Some of the other guidelines are that you have to have 35% of your student body on free or reduced hot lunch. Again, that's typically more in urban centers. There's got to be a 10% match from a business or a commercial enterprise because this is meant to foster school business partnerships. And so that sometimes is a critical, difficult issue to overcome. Bonds are 20 years, and the program has to be approved by a local education association. There's got to be buy-in from the community, and of course, there's also the need for a passage a referendum. It is such a cost savings that it is a worthwhile venture. I see that one of the requirements is, as you mentioned, the 10% matching from the business sector. But I see also in your article that one organization, the National Education Foundation, will provide the 10% match to all schools that apply. Well, what is this National Education Foundation, and why are they so committed to this process? That's an excellent point. They are a nonprofit educational organization and they are willing to foster and help defray this cost. And they have been real big on promoting STEM, that's the science and technology, engineering, and math. And these schools typically aspire to help the disadvantaged. Two good points that the National Education Foundation supports. So in one sense, if the school district can't get a business in the district to co-sponsor, they could go to this national organization. Correct, to satisfy that 10% match, yes. I was surprised to see in your article that only five districts so far in Illinois have been granted the QZAB funding, yet you noted that the research indicates that the application process isn't that difficult. Why do you think so few have uh, applied for funding or received funding? You know, it hasn't been highly promoted by the federal government, and I think when they first came out with all the restrictions, school districts just didn't want to take a, the opportunity. Passing referendums is never easy. Finding enterprise zones, uh, working with your local governance, whether it's city council or mayor, is not always easy. And, and finding that partnership initially, uh, which would come up with 10% of the cost, certainly was a roadblock. But there have been successful districts across the country, including in Illinois. And I think as long as they continue to provide this funding to the other districts pursuing it. 
Do you personally know the case of any of the Illinois districts who received the funding? Yes, a neighbor of ours to the south, the Cater School District, got uh, almost five million, four million six hundred seventy-eight thousand. Others include Aurora East, Galesburg, Shelbyville, and Edwards County Community Unit School District Number One. And you note that little research has been done on Q's ads. What lines of research do you think would be fruitful? Well, I'd love to see a qualitative study going to these districts, talking to administrators, and getting their opinion and their perceptions about how the application process went, how the the funding came through, and follow up on the success and the difficulties they've had. Do you see that as a doctoral dissertation study, or is this you working with some students or colleagues on this? Uh, Either way. We're always looking for a good dissertation topic. In our classes, the 575 or 579, uh, we do a lot of research, and our, our goals are to submit uh, articles of this fashion. And my thanks go out to Dr. Mary Manos, who did uh, most of this research and submitted it as an article to a class in the EAF 575. Also, oh, this is a product of a class assignment. Yes, it is. Use it as demonstrations of my classes uh, uh, since then. <laughs> That's great. Does the state's financial situation and the, the state's lowered bond rating affect particular schools or districts' inclination to even look into bond funding right now? Well, they do, and it's a problem. You know, the state has not provided any construction grant monies. Our school districts, the buildings are getting older all the time. And many of the districts don't have the EAV to even have ability to bond for a new building. So for the future, if the state doesn't step in, we need to lean more on the federal or some other ways of providing funding for school building. What is the typical interest rate right now if someone did try to float their own bond through the state, as opposed to here you're saying an interest-free bond? I'm not sure. I'm guessing around 5 to 6%. And like I said, the, these examples that were provided, they saved over half the cost of a typical school bond. And so that's significant. And all those bonds that were 5 to $6 million, they saved equals. Thank you. I'm sure today's brief conversation will motivate others to read your publication and perhaps even try to apply for a Q's ad. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Pass. The full citation for today's article is Manos and Banneke, 2012, QZABS, Funny Name, Great Opportunity for Public Schools, published in the Illinois Association of School Business Officials, Volume 24, Number 2, pages 25 to 28. The citation can also be found at the website education.illinoisstate.edu slash faculty underscore staff slash research slash podcasts. Join us for future research break broadcasts. This podcast is sponsored by Illinois State University's College of Education, where we strive to assure that all students realize the democratic ideal through our teaching, research, and service to the field of education.